Terraria is my second favourite game of all time. The sheer variety of weapons, bosses, potions and all sorts of other marvels just keeps me coming back time and time again. While I was working on my previous project, I was playing this game in my free time. Naturally, once you've played a game for over 1500 hours, you get bored of it. So I decided to play through each class. If you've never played Terraria before, I'll quickly explain. While there's no specific class system that you'd find in games such as World of Warcraft or many FPS war games, there are four specific types of weapons and damage that can be dealt from by them. They consist of melee, ranged, magic, and summon. As you've gleaned from the title of this video, I'll be ranking each class from worst to best. Keep in mind, this is based on my opinion, but I'd be hard pressed to find a more informed opinion than mine. I have been playing this game for almost a decade and have a total of 1500 hours after all. But still, if you have a differing opinion, don't be afraid to let me know in the comments. I also want to say as a disclaimer, I find all these classes really fun to use one way or another. It's just that some classes are more fun than others. With that being said, let's get on with this. I hate relying on others. I'm sure many of you can relate. Whether that be for group projects, employment, or robbing a bank, it's an all around pain. So when there's an entire class dedicated to the principle of relying on others, it's bound to be my least favorite. The summoner is the epitome of this. The biggest pet peeve I have with the summoner class is the armor, or lack thereof. Part of the supposed compromise with the more powerful classes is the reduction of defense in their armor sets. This can be seen here with the summoner's best pre-hard mode armor, the obsidian set. 15 defense, which in comparison to the molten armor is a whole 10 defense less. The final summoner set in the game, the stardust set, has only 38 defense, which is pretty pathetic if you ask me. Not only is the defense department lacking with these armor sets, but the variety of armor available to the summoner is mediocre. There is no summoner variant for any of the hard mode ores and bars, except for the hallowed. Furthermore, the bonuses don't really provide anything super cool. They only relate to the number of minions you can summon, the speed of your character, damage your minions can do, and range at which the summoner's only weapon type can go. Speaking of that, the only real weapon type apart from minions you can use to full effect with this class is the whip. There are only nine different whips in the game, with six of them being hard mode exclusive. The main intent for the implementation of the whip was to give the player the ability to guide their minions towards certain enemies they want to prioritize, but this rarely ever works for me. It's possibly because I use it a lot, but I have seen my minions prioritize an off-screen enemy while I was whipping something straight in front of me. Speaking of the minions, most of them are pretty mediocre at best. The worst minion types are the ones that can't fly. Regardless, there are still many cool ones. My personal favorite is the UFO. Furthermore, the amount of accessories required to wear to make the most of this class is just too many. And this is by master mode standards, which gives you the capacity to have two extra accessory slots. Add to that, you also need to wear the feral claws at minimum for you to be able to utilize your whip to its full potential, because they aren't automatic. By far, the worst stage of the game to be playing as a summoner is early hard mode. The only whips you can obtain are the firecracker and the cool whip, and the only minions you can obtain are ground walkers. It's such a pain to defeat the mechanical bosses with these drawbacks. Despite all the negative things I've said about the summoner class, it can still be a fun class to play. Once you've defeated the mechanical bosses, this class begins to shine. You can obtain more and better minions that can actually fly, such as the miniature version of the twins. My favorite summoner set is of course the Stardust set. The set bonus is an unkillable guardian who punches faster than the flash. Overall, while this class is fun towards the end, the initial drawbacks outweigh the benefits enough for me to place it below the other classes. Oh boy, Han Solo isn't gonna like me for this one. The Ranger is bland, boring, dull, mundane, stale. All the words you could use to describe how lame this class looks on face value can be used to describe this. There really isn't much special about it. However, it is still fun throughout most of the game if you exclusively choose to use guns and explosive launchers. Yeah, I'm in the guns camp for this game, unless you're using a shitty inaccurate weapon like the Gatligator. You know where your bullets are going. 
Straight ahead. There's no annoying ass arc like you get with bows. Honestly, what kind of fuckwit dumb fuck would actually choose to use bows over guns? If you were in a duel with a person with a gun and all you had was a bow, you might as well have your last will and testimony prepared, especially if you're using the Daedalus Storm Bow. But enough about my disdain for bows. What are the guns like? Most of them shoot exclusively bullets, which you have to craft. I usually craft explosive bullets in early hard mode, but then deviate to either chlorophyte or high velocity bullets as I progress. As you progress through the game, this class becomes increasingly fun to play. In particular, I love the Mega Shark, Stinger, Stake and Rocket Launchers, Tactical Shotgun, Sniper Rifle, and the Xeno Popper. But the fun stops the second you defeat the Lunatic Cultist. This class is by far the worst for dealing with the lunar events. It's only useful for specific targeting. This means it's the worst class for crowd control, unless you have luminite bullets, but you can only obtain them once you've defeated the Moon Lord, so they practically don't count. Usually, this fact doesn't really matter, but there is one mob from a certain pillar which is usually easy to kill, but becomes an absolute pain in the ass to deal with using ranged weapons. <laughs> Furthermore, when you actually defeat the pillars, the Moon Lord can be really annoying due to one factor. If you are smart and have the sniper scope, trying to click on the nurse can be really frustrating. This is because they binded the same key for selecting NPCs with the function for increasing view range. Overall, while this class is still fun, it's nowhere near as fun as the next two. God, I'm starting to even think it's worse than the summoner. No, no, no. At least the armor is balanced defense-wise, but it has no accessories. No, no, no. This decision is final. And then there were two. Which of them is the best? The greatest. The most practical. I think you all know the answer. In second place, I have the mage. Okay, 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 all right, stop it. I know this isn't the most popular opinion. I know it may seem like I'm deliberately trying to be some sort of edgelord leafy wannabe here, but I have genuine reasons for this placement. Yes, the mage has really cool flashy weapons. Yes, the bonuses are awesome. Yes, the mana flower is one of the greatest accessories of all time. But the mana system kills whatever chance this class has of being first place. Don't get me wrong, I like the system. It provides balance, especially in the end game, with weapons like the final prism. But with nerfing comes the inevitable loss of power. That is kind of the point, isn't it? But once you run out of mana, you drink a mana potion. It's what makes the mana flower such a powerful tool for the magicians of Terraria. It saves you the effort of either pressing the J button or going through your inventory and automatically gets you to drink a mana potion when it's depleted. However, this perk comes with a price. Mana sickness. What is mana sickness? Well, your newbiness, let me explain. Mana Sickness is a debuff you receive whenever you drink a Mana Potion. At first, your damage inflicted with magic weapons is reduced by a whopping 25%, gradually reducing down to nothing after 5 seconds. This is doubled, however, if you drink another Mana Potion during the debuff. Normally, it's not bad enough to absolutely kill this class, unless it's a quick weapon like the Final Prism, but it does contribute to it being second rather than first. My next biggest gripe is the armor. Apart from the summoner, the mage has the least amount of defense compared to the others. Best you can hope for is 46 defense with the nebula armor. Despite this, they do offer some cool buffs. The final problem I have with the mage is the lack of piercing weapons. Well, at least in regards to being able to pierce through the ground. The only weapons I can think of that can do this are the vile thorn and the nettle burst. But contrary to all the negatives I've explained, the mage is an incredibly fun class to play. You get such a huge variety of weapons you can use in almost any situation. They can inflict many different debuffs onto your enemies, such as the Curse Flame and Ichor, and they can travel far and reasonably accurate. My personal favorites include the Rainbow Rod, Cursed Flame, Crystal Storm, Inferno Fork, Stellar Tune, Nebula Arcanum, Last Prism, and who could forget, the Water Bolt. 
Let's also not forget the famous space gun and meteorite armor combination. Overall, it's an incredible experience, but there's just one more that tops it. What if I told you there was a class? A class which provides you immensely powerful weapons without the restrictions applied to others. A class where the armor sets are uncompromised. Where defense and attack rule supreme. What if I told you this class was already implemented into the game? You'd think I was joking, wouldn't you? Well, I'm not. And the melee class is proof of that. It's so unbelievably underrated, it's not funny. First off, the armors are incredibly powerful. The best set, the Solar Flare armor, has 78 defense alone, not counting the many bonuses provided, such as the ability to dash like the Shield of Cthulhu. You also have awesome sets like the Turtle armor, and it's unanticipated, but more than welcome upgrade the beetle set. All across the game, you have great sets of armor to choose from. The accessories are also great. The feral claws give you the ability to constantly swing your weapons without having to click, like you're playing cookie clicker. The titan glove gives you an increase in weapon size and knockback. The magma stone ensures everything you touch with your sword lights up into an inferno. Combine these with a few other accessories and you get the fire gauntlet, a melee man's best friend. It's just a shame that the titan glove can be a pain to get sometimes, because you need to rely on mimics, and mimics aren't exactly that common. There are so many melee weapons to choose from in each stage of the game, and they're all powerful too. Weapons such as the Blade of Grass and Star Fury are almost vital for the early game. The Volcano is a sword which I'm tempted to take with me into mid-hard mode every time, but they're just the icing on the cake. The Vampire Knives are so good. Unlimited ammo, decent range, no mana, and they heal you. What more can you ask for? You know how godly a weapon is when the developers try time and time again to nerf it, and it's still amazing. Oh yeah, and then there's the Terror Blade and the Zenith. The only real drawback to this class is the fact that you have to play in a Crimson World. This can be annoying, because you tend not to get as many Crimson Altars as you would Demon Altars in a Corrupt World. But this really doesn't matter once you know how to make Spelunker Potions. Overall, the melee class is by far the best, in my opinion. Bite me. Ow! I didn't mean literally! And that's the list. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe. All the juicy stuff, I really appreciate it. Also, if you disagree with me, feel free to let me know. Also, I just realized something. I forgot to put a Carlton reference in my last video, and I only realized it now that I've finished this script. So I'm gonna make up for it now. Carlton, 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 Send up, we'll keep our end up, and they will know that they've been playing against the famous old dark blues.